ministers to the son of David. Wow, what an exciting place to be, Jerusalem, on Palm Sunday morning must have been. But I just want us to notice as we come to pray, this is all about praise and worship, isn't it? This is all about people praising God. And as Jesus came into Jerusalem, the people took off their cloaks and their coats and their prayer shawls and they laid them on the ground for Jesus to walk over. And this morning, as we come to praise and worship, and you'll notice that those who were handicapped, those that needed healing, and the children, everybody was part of this. So everybody listening, everybody watching is part of this. As we come to praise and worship, let's take off those things that hinder us, those things that worry us, those things that we're anxious about, and lay them on the floor, not just at the feet of the king, but for the king to come and stand on and to bring his authority into those situations. We need that so much today, don't we? We need that in our country. We need Jesus to come as king and stand in authority. And as we release that authority to Jesus, it frees us up to praise and worship him this morning. So that's what we're going to do. Okay? So shall we stand? And um, I know you can't sing. You can mime. You can clap your hands. You can stamp your feet because Jesus the King is in the house. Okay? He's here. Are you excited? Come on, church. Let's praise him. to scream it out from every mountain top your goodness knows no bounds your goodness never stops your mercy follows me your kindness fills my life your love amazes me and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me oh nothing and no one anywhere close to you the earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth and in my darkest night you shine as bright as day your love amazes me and i sing because you are good and i dance because you are good and i shout because you are good you are good to me to me and i sing because you are good and i dance because you are good and i shout because you are good you are good to me with a smile of praise my heart will proclaim you are good you are good in the sun or rain my life celebrates you are good you are good with a cry of praise my heart will proclaim you are good, you are good, in the sun or rain, my life celebrates, you are good, you are good, and I 
sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good good to me you're good to me you're good to me
powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name church let's declare this Hosanna oh. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest Hosanna 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's just remain standing a moment. Thank you, O oh God, for the wonderful name of Jesus, this powerful name, the name that brings peace, the name that brings rest, the name that brings stability and security. We thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for sending Jesus. Lord, we just pray that you will presence yourself among us today. Whether we're watching this service in our homes, whether here in the church, presence yourself among us that we shall know the impact of your presence personally today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may take your seats. Ah, good to have you with us today, whether you're watching in your lounge or your kitchen or in the bedroom or you're here in church. It is great to have you with us. Glad you altered your clocks, okay? We haven't altered ours at church here yet, so I've got plenty of time. It's only half past nine. Isn't that great? We only forgot to alter our clocks once in October. Got to church and wonder why any, everybody hadn't turned up. But never mind, we won't talk about that. Hallelujah. Today is a day of celebration. Yes, it's Palm Sunday. And we recall Jesus riding into Jerusalem to fulfill the purpose for which he came. 
And that was to bring salvation. That was to bring eternal life. That was to show his love for his creation. That's you and I. God loves to show his love to you. Whatever situation you may find yourself in this morning, God loves to show his love to you. You will never look into the eyes of anybody who Jesus doesn't love, or Jesus didn't die for. He died for the whosoever. And so he was riding into Jerusalem for, to fulfill this purpose. And you know, um, it was Passover time. Tens of thousands of people were gathering in Jerusalem from all over the Roman Empire to celebrate Passover. And God chose this time, this specific time, when Jerusalem was bursting with people to reveal who his son was, Jesus. God's timing is just right. I don't know what you're waiting for in your life. You might think, oh God, how long do I have to wait? When are you going to act? When are you going to fulfill your purpose in my life? When are you, you going to speak to me to let me know what it's all about? Friends, God's timing is just right. In God's time, he will show you, he will tell you, he will reveal himself to you in an amazing way. And you'll know it's the will of God, you'll know it's God speaking to you because there's a peace inside when you know God has spoken to you and God is leading you. The Jewish people, they were remembering the night when the angel passed over the households of the Egyptians as well as the Israelites when they were in captivity way there in Egypt. But the people of Israel, they'd been given instructions that if they applied the blood to the doorposts and the lintel, the angel would pass over and their firstborn would not die. It was the death of the firstborn of the Son of God that brought freedom. The death of the firstborn of the Egyptians brought freedom to the people of Israel. Jesus, the firstborn of God, he brought freedom to us. He brought salvation. He brought us out of the slavery of sin. And friends, we have instructions just like the Israelites, then we have to apply the blood to our life as well. The blood of Jesus who was going to die on this cross, we apply that blood. You know, the Bible's clear, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And today, let's follow the maker's instructions. My challenge to you today is, have you applied that blood that you may know forgiveness because, you know, if we could get to heaven automatically, Jesus need never have died. His blood need never have been shed. But he wants us to go to heaven. We've sung this morning, he can't live in heaven without us. He's doing everything he can to bring salvation and redemption and bring us to himself in heaven. He, God sent his son to die for us. Isn't that amazing? Yes, you can say yes, even behind a mask. I can just about make it out. All right? Praise God. Jesus was coming into Jerusalem by this east gate. I just want to, Peter, if you can put a picture of the east gate there on uh, the screen. That's it. Uh, it was taken out. That photograph was actually taken by Brian Merry, who is now in heaven. And uh, when we were in Israel on, on a, in a, a party there, and that is the east gate. Okay, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem by this east gate. Sometimes they call it the golden gate. It's the gate in, that leads immediately into the temple area, right opposite the Mount of Olives. And it's this gate also that Peter and John, do you remember this story in the Acts? They were coming into Jerusalem and they saw this man, this blind, be this, this beggar, okay, um, and he was asking for help. And Peter and John, these two young men, 
They were probably, I don't know, maybe early 20s or something like that. But maybe they, they, were, just, they were going into Jerusalem. And this, this beggar was there. And he was asking for help. Peter and John had got no money. And then what did they say to him? Silver and gold we haven't got. But what we have, we're going to give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he walked. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, Peter and John, they were, they weren't going into Jerusalem, I don't think, especially on mission. Peter didn't say, to him, come on, John, we're going on a mission today. Okay, let's see what we can do. No, they, they, they were going into Jerusalem and they just saw this man on their travels. And you know, somebody once said to me, how many full-time evangelists have you got in St. Paul's? Oh, I said about 300, something like that. What? Do you know, friends, each and every one of us are evangelists. Each and every one of you are evangelists. You may not think, oh, my, I can't preach. You don't have to. Okay. Your life and your lifestyle is evangelism. People will not read the Bible, maybe, but they will read you. They will read me. They see how we live. And as you go around, you know, you can reach people I can't reach. I can reach people that you can't reach. But we go out of our church today, or you go from your lounge today, you go from your house today, and we're going into the four corners of our city of Worcester, and we're bringing the peace of God into people's lives. We're bringing it in because we actually meet them. And the peace of God that is in you, even if you don't say anything, can influence others because the presence of God is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And He energizes from you into people's lives. Have you been in a, somewhere and you think, I'm sure that guy's a Christian over there. I'm sure there's something about him. That's right. That's right. The challenge is, is there something about us? that tells other people that we are ambassadors for Christ. Wherever you may go. I'll be glad when we go out of that door again. Okay? That we don't go out of that door. Because as you go out of that door, you'll see the notice. You are now entering the mission field. And as you go out, that's where we're going. So you may see people just on your, like Peter and John did, a person in need. Oh, I'm scared to pray for them. I'm not, well, Maybe, but there'll be an opportunity. Do you know some of the great ministry that you can have as you're walking about is actually listening to people. People want somebody to talk to. Today, do you know that? It takes more energy to talk than it does to listen. Sorry, it takes more energy to listen than it does to talk. And maybe you don't have to go to Bible college. Sorry about this, students, okay? But you don't have to go to Bible college to be taught to listen. Amazing ministries listening to someone. Encouragement. Again, you have no need to go to Bible school, really. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, to, to, to practice encouragement. It's something we can all do. And I want to encourage you as you go out the doors today, as you go from your lounge today, as you're going to work today, be an influence for Jesus together in the four corners of our city. Let's bring hope to the city. We can bring hope to the nation, and we can bring hope to nations. Why is that? Because Jesus has come. Hallelujah. And he's coming to your life, and he's coming to my life. And the Holy Spirit has come into our lives, and we can do amazing things for Jesus. Amen. You see, we are his body on earth. I'm going to have to stick to my notes. What's the time? Oh, it's only quarter to ten. We're okay. Okay, and uh, uh, we are his body. His body, his, his heavenly body is, is up there now. But he's left the church that he called his body. You are his arms, his legs, his voice, his body. What a privilege, isn't it? Yes, say yes, it's okay. It's a privilege. Hallelujah. Just a minute, I'll get to my notes in a minute. Yes, here we are. All right, I'll carry on. In 1537, here's a history lesson for you. In 1537, this gate that you can see. Oh, we can't see it at the moment. Anyway, could you bring it on again, Peter? Okay. 
Uh, just keep it up for a minute. Okay, there it is. 1537, this gate was sealed by the Turks when they captured Jerusalem. In, six, in 1967, in the war, um, Israeli forces could have gained direct access to the temple courts just by directing a missile at it to its, this aging um, masonry, but they didn't. They entered into the temple courts by a more devious way, they tell me, through St. Stephen's Gate, which is only about 300 meters away. And it's this eastern gate, this golden gate that remains sealed exactly as foretold by Ezekiel the prophet. Ezekiel 44, verse 1 and 2, if you want to follow it on your phone or in your Bible, it says this, Then the man brought me, this is Ezekiel, Then the man brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, the one facing east, and it was shut. And the Lord said to me, This gate is to remain shut. It must not be reopened. No one may enter through it. It is to remain shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered into it. And uh, Ezekiel in his prophecy goes on to prophesy that the coming of the Lord to earth and the glory of God returning to the temple will be through this gate. The Jewish people believe that through Ezekiel's prophecy that the Lord will return to earth through this gate. And maybe you can just see on that photograph, they actually pay thousands and thousands of dollars to be buried there so that when he comes, they will rise up with him and enter through that gate into Jerusalem. They're still looking for the Messiah coming. But the Messiah has come. Jesus has come. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, the Jews didn't recognize him. They crucified him. But you know, when Jesus comes back to earth, that will be his second and his final coming. Hallelujah. There's a story. I want to close with this story today. Where the Pharisees brought a woman to Jesus. And they'd actually caught this woman in the very act of adultery. And they brought him to Jesus. And they said, Moses' law says that she should be stoned. What do you say? The question was a trap for Jesus. But Jesus already knew that this lady was going to come and they were going to bring her. Jesus bent down and he wrote in the sand. What he wrote in the sand, we do not know. I don't know what he wrote in the sand. But what we do know is that one by one, the accuser, the Pharisees just left and left him with this woman. And he talked to her. They didn't stone her. They didn't put her, he didn't condemn her to death. Do you know why? Because at that point, he was on the way to the cross to pay the death penalty for her. He's paid the penalty of our sin. He said to her, where are you, the people that accuse you? Where said they gone? Neither do I accuse you, he said. I want you to go and sin no more. And he went to the cross and paid the death penalty for that woman. I don't know about you today. Maybe there's musicians who can come back. I don't know about you today. Your life might be in a mess. Like that lady. Like that man at the gate. The beautiful gate. The eastern gate. Golden gate. His life was in a mess. He couldn't work. Couldn't do it. All he could do was beg. Didn't know where he's coming from. Didn't know his future. Or you might be like this woman. And your prayer is today. Lord. How are you going to get me out of this mess? Jesus has come. He's come. He's been to the cross. The price is paid for your sin. He's the one who can get you out of that mess that you're in. The Egyptian, the Israelites wondered how they were going to be freed from the slavery of Egypt. 
They wondered how they were going to do it, but an angel came and brought freedom. Jesus has come to bring freedom for you. Amen. You may feel captive. You may feel guilty. Jesus went to the cross to release us, to take that guilt away, to take that sin away. That we can stand before God justified. You can stand before God justified. That means just as though you've never sinned. You can have peace with yourself and you can have peace with God because Jesus has come. I'm going to pray this morning for you, for you at home, for you in here, in church. Maybe today your life is in a mess and say, I've got to get God to put things right. You may need healing. You may need healing from guilt, resentment, oh, all these things that are stopping you moving on in God. We're just going to wait a moment. If you need prayer for that this morning, I'm going to have, I want you to take courage today. We're going to see our closing song in a moment. And we're going to pray before then for you. I want to have courage for you just to stand to your feet where you are. We're just going to bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes. I just, if you need prayer this morning, you may want to commit your life to Jesus. You may never have committed your life to Jesus. You may want to recommit yourself to him because, friends, there's a mission to go on. We're not going to waste our life anymore. We're not going to spend our life anymore. We're going to invest it in something eternal, in someone who is eternal. Would you stand to your feet as well? Just to recommit or commit your life. I'm going to pray for you today. Just going to wait a moment for you to stand. God has spoken into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to join those who are standing today. Hallelujah. When you're home, you may want to stand. God knows your heart. He knows your heart. He knows what you're thinking just now and you know he's prompted as well. He's calling you. He's calling you to make the most of the rest of your life. Not to waste it. Because Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for those who are standing. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for speaking into our lives, all our lives, this Palm Sunday. Thank you, Lord, we can bring our lives to you, not just our sin to you. Today, I just pray for those who are standing today in this church and in homes. Lord, that you will come and minister to them in, a, in a, an amazing way. Lord, that you will come and touch their lives, cleanse their lives, do a new thing in their lives. Oh God, we thank you. You love to visit us through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask through the power of your Spirit, you will visit lives and transform the lives that have stood before you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, as they reach out to you, you know their need. Lord, minister to those needs today. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We are going from this place. We're going from our homes, different people, because you have touched us. We thank you, Lord, we can know the touch of the Master's hand this morning. And we give you thanks. Lord, help enable all those who have stood before you this morning to walk in the victory that you brought when you went through those gates into the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Be with us all in a very special way today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Mr. You may be seated. Thank you. No, 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 you can stay stand. Well, it's okay. Stand in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, on my drinks thing down here, it says now or never. And as PJ was talking, I felt a real strong, uh, just the, the Lord just focusing in on that word now. Now. Now is the time. Do I share it? I've just realized, literally, as I've been talking to you, that the title of this next song is Won't Stop Now. Today is the day to respond to what we've heard. Today is the day to lay our cloaks under the feet of the King and to go forward in confidence, in courage, and to believe for breakthrough in those situations that you need to see breakthrough in. And I know looking around, there's a few situations. So let's stand, let's declare as we sing our last song. And uh, yeah, enjoy Jesus. Okay, you might like to clap in this one.
So come out, Lord, like never before. Oh, just, just as we're singing, somebody here is really struggling, okay? Maybe online, I don't know. The best is yet to come. That's what we've sung. Now is the time to believe that. Now that's really hard and somebody's in the middle of a really, really serious, difficult situation. I've got no idea what that is, maybe more than one. But I I just want to say to you, God's heart is for you. I feel really emotional. God's heart is for you. Wherever you're at this morning, he knows what he just wants you to do is to reach out, okay? That's all you've got to do. Reach out, maybe at home. I know it feels silly when you're at home, lifting your hands in the sky. But actually, that's what we need to do. Lift, lay before him and just let him take that burden. Allow him to bring peace into your heart right now so that that will raise your level of faith. It will raise your level of trust because breakthrough is coming, okay? It's coming for you. It's coming to enable you to deal whatever lies ahead. Hallelujah. Let's just sing that again. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop. Jesus, you've heard us. You've heard our hearts cry. You've seen our response. Jesus, we commit ourselves to you, this week to you, our circumstances to you. Lead us through in the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray that your glory may flow into our lives and out into a world that needs you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's been a year since, uh, okay, yes, I've got it. I've got them here. Don't worry. Uh, A year since uh, lockdown, and as you go out, the stewards will go out. We're going to sing a song that's been um, massive for a lot of people in a lot of places all around the world. It's a blessing. And as you go there are some palm crosses which you are free to take or you'll be given one if you would like one you know if God's really spoken into your spirit this morning I'd say take one pin it on your bathroom mirror so that tomorrow morning when you get up you can remember (laughs) what God has promised you today remember the promise that you've made to him and just remember Palm Sunday that's the day the king came And that's the day he stood in victory and authority in my life. If you want further prayer, please stay in your seat at the end. You can either stay in your seat and someone will come to you. Could I please remind those that are doing the praying, you must maintain social distancing. It's very, very important. Or on the table over there, there are some prayer cards which you can write and put in the um, deposit in the little post box thingy there. Now, here's a good deal. 
If you fill in a prayer card with one of the pens from over there, you need to keep the pen. Don't put it back in the box. Take it with you, keep it. So if you fill in a prayer card, you get a free pen, okay? That's because we can't have them put it back in the box. But they are quite nice pens, actually. So there you go. So um, pray God will really, really bless you this morning and this week. Okay. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Stay seated, someone will come to you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence be before you and behind you and beside you all around Your coming and your going. 